Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk all about column from examples in Power BI. Okay, so column from examples has been in Power BI desktop for a long time and they've made some really cool enhancements. But I wanna make this video not just because of the enhancements, but because every time we talk about column from examples, every time we do a demonstration or show something, people are like, what the French toast did you just do, right? It's amazing, it's phenomenal. And you guys know how I like, you know, you guys know how I am, right? I'm not lazy, I'm just really efficient. And column from examples just adds to my efficiency. Okay, okay. So you guys know how I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. All right, so the first thing you need to do is open the query editor. So when you get the query editor open, of course it shows on a separate screen. Hang on, here we go, that's okay. All right, so now we have it open. And so I'm gonna walk you through about six different scenarios. The first one I wanna call the basic. All right, so check this out. All right, so notice I have different, you know, different varying ways that, different ways that the name, first name and last name is stored in my table. And basically what I'd like is, I just like the first initial period and the last name. So click on add column in the ribbon, click on column from examples. It's gonna give us a, you know, column one, you name it whatever you want. But the key here is you type it exactly the way you want. So I want P. Johnson, right? That's the way I want it to show. And it says, hmm, what are you trying to do, Patrick? So type another one. Continue the pattern, right? Continue, it'll pick it up, I promise, right? Do it again, it goes, wait, I don't quite understand. That's all right. I'm gonna do it one more time. S. Turner. Bam, right? Now you can see it picks it up. And if you look, right, through all these different ways that I have names stored, it picks up the, the pattern that I'm looking for, it detects the different ways, picks up the pattern, and it just does it for me. If that's not efficiency, if that's not efficient, I don't know what it is. All right, that's the first example, that's the basic, okay? So we'll go ahead and click okay, adds it. Um, and then the next one I wanna call the date time, right? A lot of times we have dates in different ways stored in our database and we just want to pull some information out, right? So same same thing, right? Go to add column, choose column from examples. And this time I want to change the date format and I want to append just the abbreviated day name, you know, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I just want M-O-N-W-E-D. You get it, right? You get it. So what I'm going to do, right? I want the year, so the year here is 2011, I want the month, and I want the day, but most importantly, I want that, right? And this is Patrick, I don't know what this is. So I was like, hang on one second. So let's do it again, 2011. Ah, I messed up, I messed up, it's okay. Right, that's why these videos are great. Make a mistake, we fix it. And then 2011-9-15, this is Thursday, and then if I hit it, it picks it up. It picks up my pattern, extracts out the abbreviation, reformats my date, I didn't write a lick of code. So not only right, does the column from examples add to my efficiencies, but you can lose, use, it, blah, blah, use it as a great learning tool. So should, let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I click okay here, right? And then I click on the little gear in the applied steps, it actually will show me the M that it wrote. And so I can use it to learn M if I want to, right? I'm not saying this is like the exhaustive dictionary of M. In fact, there is, if you click on this um, little icon, you can go, it takes you to a document. Chris Webb, my buddy Chris Webb, he has a really good blog where he talks a lot about M. So if you wanna get intimate and enmeshed in M, go out and you know, read the blog, look at this. But, but, right, this is a great way to learn. All right, so that's number two, right? The date time. The next one I wanna call Padding, number three, padding. So we go to the padding, so go to my padding query. And so what I wanna do is, right, I wanna concatenate 2018 and the month, the year and the month into one value, but I wanna have a leading zero on my single digit months and don't have the zero on my double digit months. Does that make sense? So if I'm March three, I wanna show 03. If I'm April, I wanna show 04. If I'm in October, I just wanna show one zero. All right, so let me show you. So go to column from examples and do 2018 slash 03. And looks what hap look what happens to 10, right? Look what happens to it, it puts a zero there. So all I need to do, right, is get rid of it. 
and bam, it fixes all of them, all the subsequent values, December, anything after, you know, beginning October, November, December, it gets rid of that zero for me. What, this is great, and I didn't write any code. I'm loving this, I'm loving it. And so the next one I wanna call the split. And so the next three kind of all fall in the same bucket because it's transitioning between numeric, non-numeric, and strings, and things like that. And so how do you handle that if I go number, string, number, string, or number, string, number, right? How do, how do you write M to extract those out? So let me show you, right? So the first one is just called the split. Let's go here, click the split. And so this is, this is I wanna say the easy one, right? Larry Rivera, and I just wanna split out the first name and last name, put a space between them. That's pretty easy, right? Call them from examples. But you can do it all in one step, right? I just type L-A-R-R-Y, R-I-V-E-R-A, and then try the next one, Teresa Brown. Bam, picks it up, does the split, adds the space, just like that. Did I write code? Of course I didn't write any code, because I'm efficient, right? Okay, all right, that's number four. The next one is the alphanumeric split. So it's pretty cool, so check this out. All right, check this out. So look at this data. Right, I'm starting with a number, then I'm transitioning to a string, then I'm going back to a number, and I wanna go one door, one space, door is 2012, right? Pretty easy, pretty easy, but how would you write the code? You don't have to write any code, check this out. Look at how cool this is, one D, sorry, one D-O-R-I-S, 2012, bam. Let's do another one, so I one, uh oh, wait, sorry, one Doris, 2012, all right, and then two ash, uh oh, yep, eight, I'm gonna tie it, 2018, and boom, right? It picks up the pattern and does the, puts the split, splits it out, places the spaces between the numbers and the strings, and it just does it for me, right? The alphanumeric split. Now, the last one that I'm gonna show you is the big split. And this one's really interesting because it's you know varying, varying levels of, varying number of transitions. You may have two transitions, you may have six transitions. Let me show you the data, check it out. All right, so let's cancel this. Let's go to the big split. And so you can see I have Michelle three, Janice two, and down here I have several transitions between strings and numbers. And I wanna automatically pull them out. I just want the strings, I don't want the numbers, right? So I'm gonna go call them from examples. And then I'm gonna provide some examples to the desktop. Michelle, Janice, right? If I can spell properly, and P-I-H-P. And then let's do the next one, Jimmy and Roger. Look at there, right? And even though the string lengths are different and the number of transitions are different, Power Query is smart enough, it picks it up and does it for you, right? It splits them out by spaces and only gives me the strings. What? This is phenomenal. I'm digging these new enhanced column from examples uh, capability. So if you haven't tried them out and you wanna try it out, guess what I did for you? Not only did I provide this great video, but what I did was you can download the PBX file down below, right? So you can click a link, get a copy of it, and test it out. All right, so what do you guys think? You got any questions, comments? You know what to do, post them down below. If it's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.